A couple of months ago, my daughter graduated from public health at Tulane in New Orleans. That was a very interesting weekend for me. Um, not only did I go back through my memories of my daughter's past, I went back through the memories of my own past and the, uh, the past of uh, medicine. And here's why. This is the uh, a picture of the awards ceremony. This was the dean. He brought up a great um, discussion about the past and how it applies to the present. And he, he focused on hygiene. Now, <clears throat> where's the, where does the term hygiene come from uh, in this discussion? Actually, the past and hygiene... Um, and lifestyle are the uh, will be the the topics of uh, of this next mini series. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a um, a picture that showed this better. But you may be able to see this. Is, this is where I graduated, Hopkins, and it's not called Hopkins School of Public Health. It's called Hopkins Hygiene and public health. Now, so again, here we see that term hygiene. And what does it mean? Well, let's just actually look it up in the dictionary and talk about it. Condition and practices conducive to maintaining health and preventing disease. And then it talks about especially, most people, especially regarding cleanliness. And when you say hygiene, most people think cleanliness. Well, it's more than cleanliness. It is a lifestyle to avoid disease. Now, <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there who are not history buffs. And let me just make this, give this one example before you start thinking, okay, this mini-series is not for me. <clears throat> there's a fellow named uh, Charles Dickens. He wrote a book called The Pickwick Papers. And it featured a fellow named Joe who was so obese that he could not breathe effectively. I can't imagine anyone who, uh, who has enough interest about public health and medicine to watch this channel and go through some of the difficult, deep, uh, nerdly detail that we go through, not being aware that we're undergoing this epidemic right now. Uh, inability to breathe, sleep apnea, um, challenges associated with obesity. So we are not just talking about the past here. We're talking about how the past is continuing to, um, to be relived by us in the present. Now, <clears throat> that dean uh, of the School of Public Health in Tulane when he talked, he talked about this um, series. It's a Netflix original called Charité. Charité is the name of a hospital just north of Berlin. It was built in the 1750s uh, by Frederick I. He commissioned it because of the bubonic plague. And he asked that it be built outside of Berlin because uh, the bubonic plague had already wiped out a huge portion of Europe. And they did not want those patients being carried to somewhere in the city. They wanted them carried outside. Charité still exists, and it's rated as the top hospital out of over a thousand in Germany. Over half of the Nobel Prize winners uh, in medicine and uh, physiology from Germany worked at worked uh, in past tense or work presently at Charité Hospital. The uh, series is a great one. It's talking about Koch, uh, Robert Koch, C -H -C -O, uh, K -O -C -H, and the advent of microbiology and that level of science in medicine. It starts out with this scene. This is the head nurse. And again, <clears throat> maybe I overspoke a minute ago when I talked about the role of women in uh, public health. As you may have noticed from those pictures uh, of my daughter's graduation, women are taking over public health. And I think it's a good thing. Again, I think uh, men have, have driven the, the train for a while, and it's time for the women to take over. 
But this lady, the head nurse, uh, would say, as she said in the opening scene of Charité, it wasn't the doctors anyway, it was always the nurses. The, whether or not the patient lived or died and how well the patient did was determined by these folks, not by the docs, according to her. These folks and God. So, <clears throat> one other point about this before we move on. You probably noticed the difference in uniforms. The head nurse and these ladies in dark blue were full-blown nurses. These ladies were apprentices. And how did you become an, an, an apprentice? Well, first of all, you were born poor. Next, you became sick. You were taken to charity. You survived, and you could not pay your hospital bill at charity. This is how you repaid it. You became a nurse and gave up a huge chunk of your life, maybe all of it, providing care to other Charité patients. And I said charity a couple of times. Charity is actually the hospital that I went to that I'll mention uh, in the next video. Charity in New Orleans. Um, but let's go in a little bit deeper into Charité in... Um, in Germany. In fact, I'll cover a couple of other things and talk about um, how they relate, again, back to uh, medicine, giving medications versus lifestyle. This was uh, Virchow. Virchow was the head of, chief of staff there at Charité. One of the hospitals there is named after him. Um, Docs will maybe recognize Virchow's node. He um, made a comment about uh, how to discover lung cancer. This was uh, Robert Koch, Koch's postulates. Koch, again, was uh, credited with bringing microbiology and the, and the discovery of um, bacteria mostly, not viruses yet, but bacteria as causes of disease. Ehrlich um, was very prominently mentioned or covered. He's one of the main characters in this series, as are Koch, uh, Ehrlich, um, Virchow, Great series. Any of you that have any interest in history or medicine, you, I'm sure you'd enjoy it. This is not a scene out of the video itself. This is a painting of um, the operatory, the uh, training room for the medical students. As you see, it's a large arena type seating with the operation going on down in the bottom. Um, <clears throat> Hopkins. The only place I've worked, by the way, that has one of these is Hopkins. They still have one of those. Very nice. My wife, Janice, I referred to her to a doc for, uh, for something she had, and she ended up being presented in that uh, Grand Rounds section. Now, why do I bring this picture up? What is it? <clears throat> you may recognize this. This is the typical garb worn by a doctor in the Black Death, bubonic plague. Uh, there were actually reasons for each component of the, uh, the doctor's uniform. And again, you may be wondering how this gets back to hygiene. And we'll, just bear with me for a second. And in fact, you may, many of you will recognize um, how this deals with the present already. The beak on this mask was filled with uh, spices uh, and herbs to keep the evil, uh, ill humors away from the doc as he went in to, to take care of patients with the bubonic plague. Other components were all kept to isolate him from, you know, wax-covered gloves, a long gown, etc. Many of, the, uh, of my patients may notice the stick. The stick was uh, there to keep, to beat off patients when they came to him to get care if he was getting too many of them. Again, as I said, I, <clears throat> as, as I have mentioned many times, many of my patients come to me because they're frustrated with their doc. Um, couldn't help but, uh, but note that similarity. Um, pardon me, I meant to do a warning before I showed this picture. This is the bubonic plague. It was also called the black plague. I won't go into the biological reasons why the skin turned black. But uh, <clears throat> I will get geeky here and say, yes, you know what? We can go to the microbiology here. It's called, caused by a bacterium um, called Yersinia pestis. 
So we could focus on that. And in fact, uh, when cases do, do still occur, um, there's a map of the U.S. that shows when cases have occurred. They're still fairly rare now, though. Uh, and they happen to have, uh, happen when someone is camping or has some, uh, some exposure to fleas. Because here's the issue. Here's the, um, the transmission cycle for getting the black plague. It starts off with rats or other small mammals. Uh, fleas bite the rats. They get infected with uh, Yersinia pestis. It grows in the flea's stomach. The um, patient, the flea then bites the patient, and the patient becomes ill. Now, <clears throat> here again is the theme that I am uh, focusing on. You can focus on this, uh, this side, left side of the, of the cycle. You can be a doc, you can go see a doc, you can get sick, and uh, hope the doc can fix you. Or you can focus on this right side of the cycle and say, wait a minute, is there a way that we can prevent this disease so I don't have to go through a cure? And sure enough, we did not, um, we did not manage the Black Plague with doctors uh, running around with sticks to beat patients off. We managed the Black Plague with hygiene, with dealing with the lifestyle with cleaning up the slums that were in Europe and the constant day-to-day -day exposure to Yersinia pestis through fleas, which were infected from rats that you were living, that people were living with. So again, we'll cover some other um, components of history of public health. Uh, next week, we'll talk about John Snow. He wiped out uh, cholera by stealing the handle off of a water pump. Thank you for your interest.